Hi, this is Korg Chaos Pad NTS3. NTS3 is the third in Korg's line of small music tech gizmos you can assemble yourself. This time the focus is on effects and interaction based on an XY touchpad. It can host up to four effects simultaneously. It comes with over 30 built-in effects. And perhaps most unique compared to other multi-effects units, Korg has an open SDK for it, which means anyone can release an effect for it, so there's a ton of potential for fun and innovative effects. As a matter of fact, my son and I worked on one, which I'll show you later. In this video, I'll take an in-depth look at NTS3 and discuss its pros and cons. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Cork sent me NTS3. Other than that, no money changed hands, they have no say over the content of this video, and don't get to see it before it's published. Okay, let's start with an overview. First, regarding naming conventions, the NTS3 isn't a new version of the NTS2 or the NTS1. Rather, each is a totally different device. The NTS1 is both a synth and an effects box. The NTS2 is an oscilloscope and CV generator. And the NTS3's focus is effects, though it can also make its own sounds and has a few simple XY-based oscillators. So far, when Korg wanted to come out with a new version, they didn't add a number to the beginning, rather they called it a Mark II as opposed to the original Mark I. What's common among all of these is that they come in a kit that you need to assemble yourself based on a printed circuit board, both for the guts and the enclosure. And then the NTS-1 and the NTS-3 can run user plugins as opposed to the NTS-2, which is just a scope. Assembling all three isn't difficult and seems pretty risk-free. It doesn't require any soldering. This took me 15 minutes and I was taking my time. Korg has a great build video on their YouTube channel, so I won't repeat that here. The only thing I didn't see there that you might want to be aware of is that you need to swap these jumpers to use the sync in and out as MIDI ports. Okay, once it's built, here's an overview of what we've got. Front and center is the touchpad which gives you control of two effects parameters, and then there's another effects depth slider for a third parameter, typically dry wet control. But you can reassign these three dimensions to any one of up to eight parameters per effect. You can run up to four effects simultaneously. This program has this oscillator generating the sound, but also a bandpass filter and a ping pong delay. And you can configure different routings for the four effects. Each of these six routings has a name, which indicates what it does. And there's a detailed routing layout either in the software or in the manual. Other controls are this detent encoder, which is also a push encoder. There's a six character display for parameter and menu item names, and a few other physical and touch buttons. Typically edit will let you edit stuff. Perform lets you perform and work on a program level, meaning groups of four effects and the effect buttons are used to select the individual effects and edit them. Mute lets you mute audio into effects and show parameter values, and tempo is both a tap tempo, and it lets you set the tempo manually using the fader. Each of the effects slots lets you host one of over 30, I think 35 factory effects, and then after that appear the user effects that you can load onto the system. So for example, these three are by sign vibes, and this one is a certain loop up effect I'll talk about later. Once you've set up your up to four effects, you can save them as a program, which is a group of up to four effects. You can see how many based on the LEDs that light up as you scrub through the effects. You can store up to 200 programs on this. There are 100 factory programs and then 100 open slots. Let's see the tools we have for performing with an effect. And effects, of course, aren't just oscillators, which I keep pressing here. If we go to an empty program that starts with just one effect, I can load up, say, a low-pass filter. To play or perform with an effect, touching the pad sends audio to it, to the effect. So this is our raw audio. And this is the low-pass filter. In the case of this effect, the x-axis controls the filter's cutoff, and the y-axis controls resonance. And the effect's depth slider is typically a dry-wet control. Some of the effects have only three parameters, but many have more. 
editing parameters beyond the first three on the panel requires a bit of menu diving because there are a few more things that you can control per parameter besides its value. I'll show you that later on. Meanwhile, let's just look at the parameters. You edit an effect by holding edit and the effect button, and then you can choose which parameter that you want to edit. And as you can see, for example, this low pass filter also has an LFO, LFO sync, LFO rate, and LFO depth parameters. To edit this value, you need to press again and choose value again. I'll talk about this later, but basically I can increase the LFO depth. And if I go back out, you'll hear the LFO now controls or modulates the filter cutoff. I could then say, go to the LFO rate and edit that. And this sets the LFO rate. I need to be in the effect. So this is really fast. Go back into the effect. That's a pretty fast rate. Or I could lower it. And now the LFO rate is really slow. You can hold or freeze the XY pad both for the entire program and for an individual effect. So let's say, for example, that I didn't want to have to hold my finger here for the LFO to sweep. I just hold my finger and press perform. And that holds the effect. And then a long press on hold releases that hold. You could also freeze an individual effect. So let's say, for example, that I put um, a ping pong delay in an effect slot two, and then I put an oscillator in effect slot one. So as you can hear here, I'm changing both the pitch of the oscillator and the timing of the delay, which is kind of annoying. Let's maybe choose an oscillator that keeps on going. Anyway, if I wanted the oscillator not to change, I could hold the oscillator's value by pressing effects. It'll start to blink. Then I could go into effects two and apply the delay as I want while the oscillator stays frozen. And to unfreeze the oscillator, just long press on the effects button. So that's the basic overview of using the NTS3. In terms of connectivity, it's powered via USB-C, which can also send and receive MIDI, but not audio. It has a stereo input and stereo output, an analog sync input and output, which can sync tempo with Volcas and other devices that support analog sync. And like I mentioned earlier, you can swap either the output or the input for TRS MIDI. So you can use this as a MIDI controller out of TRS or USB and send XY or depth over MIDI. Or if you want to control one of its many internal parameters using MIDI CCs, there are quite a few of those. That said, at least as of the current firmware, the NTS3 doesn't respond to MIDI notes. The SDK doesn't give you access to MIDI notes. Say if you wanted to play one of its internal oscillators chromatically using an external MIDI keyboard. So that's the overview. Let's go again to an empty program and just take a brief listen to its effects. We already talked pretty extensively about the low pass filter and its hidden LFO parameters. There's a bandpass filter. Again, with the same LFO parameters, by the way, and a high pass filter. Then an EQ. A three band isolator. Like all the effects, it has dry wet control. Then there's an internal chorus. Sounds pretty nice. An ensemble effect. Flanger. Phaser. Tremolo. And then we've got a few delays. This is tempo synced. That's why it has these quick jumps and delay time. That's actually one of the parameters. So if you want, you can turn sync off. And there are a few other parameters here, which you won't go over. Then there's a ping pong delay, and I'm going to turn off the internal effects here. Let's listen to this pattern. Sync tempo. Really nice ping pong delay, I think. Ding. 
Next up is a high pass delay. And then a tape echo. Let's turn off quantization or sync for this. So go into value and turn sync off. So now it'll be more like a real tape echo. Anyway, let's move on. There's a hall reverb. Let's just uh, hold this. So the effect is on hold so that I can open the filter here, maybe crank up some resonance. So that's the hall reverb. Then there's a room reverb, space, so nice spacey verbs. Then there's riser, which is a shimmer. And then the opposite, which is a submarine. This goes down in pitch. Moving on, there's a looper. This isn't a real looper, but rather one of those mini loopers. There's a certain third party plugin I'll talk about later that can do loops and overdubs, but if you want a scatter or mini looper type effect, this is it. Then there's a brain shifter. Brain size, it seems. I guess a frequency shifter. Let's keep listening to these. Vinyl break. Pretty obvious what that does. Then there's a pitch shifter. modes and obviously pitch pretty cool and there's ring mod decimator soft clip Gain, return, hard clip, again, gain, return, Seinfeld, not Seinfeld, this is a wave folder, let's listen to it maybe on a single tone, so this is our raw tone, and this is its wave folder. Anyway, moving on, we've got fuzz. Particularly aggressive distortion. A compressor, threshold control, and ratio. A limiter, gain, and knee. Both of these have additional parameters. And then we've got three oscillators, a sustain oscillator, drop, and wobble. Again, these have additional parameters. So for example, the wobble oscillator 
has an LFO, which makes it wobble. You've got control over that. So that's the last of the factory effects that are bundled with the NTS3. If you've loaded up any user effects, you'll find them after the list of the factory effects. I was in touch with Sign Vibes as I was making this video. They make a whole bunch of excellent effects for the Logue platform, and they kindly sent me betas of a few of their effects for the NTS3 to try out. Whirl is a barber pole phaser. You can hear it's a much more extreme version compared to the factory phaser. Blend is a multi-voice chorus. And then Albedo is probably my favorite. It's a granular effects processor with up to 24 grains. So this is the raw tone and let's bring it in. You control grain size. And you can freeze the grains or have them fade out. And there are a bunch of parameters here, including reversing grains, grain speed, and number of grains. So those are so far three effects from Sign Vibes and self-promotion alert, I'm releasing a Logue platform effect too, kindly coded by my son and all proceeds go to him. Let's give it a short burst of notes and see what happens. This effect is based on Steve Reich's phased looping technique. where a pattern is recorded onto a tape loop and then repeated again with a slight shift. The pattern you feed it doesn't have to be in a particular rhythm. On the contrary, since what it feeds back to you in stereo won't stay in sync anyway. You actually don't have to feed it rhythms at all. Just give it a gradual note to feed on every once in a while and keep layering textures and notes as the previous phased loops fade out based on how you set feedback. great way, I think, to create either drones or evolving textures. Parameters are feedback on the y-axis and time on the x-axis of the two loops that phase among each other. Loops can be either extremely short, in which case you'll get very quick rhythmic phasing, or you could set the time to up to four seconds, a bit less on the old NTS1 and XD and you'll get that loop go back and forth. And of course, I couldn't talk about a product without mentioning a few cons. You might get a few clicks as you change the time, so you might want to disable that dimension on the pad. And it has a memory too, so if you extend time after you've made it shorter, you'll get snippets of the past thrown back at you and gradually fade out. This may be a pro or a con, depending on your point of view. If you want to make sure you erase the entire buffer, just hold the bottom right corner for four seconds. There's a dry wet mix, and then there's one additional parameter that you don't have access to on the panel, and that's the ratio parameter. This sets the time shift between stereo left and stereo right. So if you swing it all the way to the right, the loops are going to be really close to each other, almost the same length. In the middle, one loop will be half the length of the other, and on the left they'll get, again, pretty ridiculous and extreme. The sweet spots are mainly here on this half. A few bonus features. If you go ahead into the parameters and set ratio all the way to 1023, all the way to the far right, then the left and right side will be exactly the same length, and then this becomes a regular looper, no phasing and you can control how long it takes the loops to fade out using the y-axis, the feedback parameter. And if you want to make sure that it absolutely never dies down, then go into the feedback parameter and assign that a value of 1023. Just make sure to use the assign feature to unassign the y-axis from feedback, assign it to none, so that feedback doesn't change. 
I'm okay with controlling feedback, so I'll leave it at Y. And then the second bonus that applies to all the plugins on the NTS3, but I think is particularly useful here, plugins are always running in the background. The only thing touching the pad controls is whether you're sending them audio or not. So if I want to send audio into the loop, I can do that. Say like this, lift my finger, the loop is still running, I can then play on top of it. And the audio that I play on top of it doesn't get added to the loop, phasing or not. So the pad basically acts like an overdub button within the context of this as a looper. These notes won't get added. If you do want to constantly add notes to the loop, just hold the pad. So now, overdub is latched for as long as hold is on. Don't forget you can always bring the loop in and out using depth as opposed to feedback control, which gradually or immediately erases the buffer if it's way down. By the way, we also have a version for the NTS-1 Mark I, the Minilog XD, and it should work on the Prologue, though I haven't tested it. But since these support only two parameters, the ratio is fixed. Let's zoom out a bit and look at things on the program level. Like I mentioned, you can load up to four effects, four different effects per slot per program. So if two loops phasing aren't enough for you, you could always add another phased loop effect. Let's maybe go through a few of the factory programs. You can see they're organized by filters and then modulation. Let's maybe look for a few with a lot of populated effects. This is high pass filter, low pass filter, limiter and silent. And this will make more sense if we have a look at the routing and how they're arranged. So three to one means the first three are in parallel and are fed into four. Let's maybe listen to a few more multi-effects chains. This is an isolator pitch shifter low pass filter and another isolator. Let's look for another one with a lot of slots filled up. Pretty wild. Let's skim through a few more. This is a tremolo low pass filter and another low pass filter. Let's try a few more. Let's see what's in here. Tape echo, chorus, and low pass filter. Let's try out one of the reverb combo effects. Reverb pumper. You can see these effects are blinking. It means they're fixed. They're frozen to a specific value. So as I play with the XY pad, I'm only controlling effect one, not effect two and three. And this has, yeah, I didn't want to freeze that, riser, tremolo, and high pass filter. Then let's show some love to the oscillators. So sustain oscillator, another one, and ping pong delay. Oops, didn't mean to freeze this. Wobble, sustain and ping pong. Wobble. High pass filter and ping pong. Nice one. Now I know I'm going to get a few self promotion comments, but there are only three effects slots taken. Why not use the fourth for phased looping? I'll freeze control of the XY pad for my effect here so that it doesn't get affected as I use the pad. I think. This makes a really nice wind chime-like texture. That doesn't sound repetitive, even though it's a very short loop. Because of the phasing or the time shift between the left and right sides. Let's listen to a few more factory multi-effects. 
nice swoosh, and this is not what you think. It's an assorted effect. LPF, flanger, tape echo, decimator. Cool. And then 100 is, again, a sorted effect. It's a factory program, I didn't name it, but it sounds pretty nice. Very cool. Okay, I promised you we'd dive into a few menus. When you edit effects, we already discussed that each effect has multiple parameters and you can select that parameter. And then when you dive in, you'll first see a sign as opposed to editing its value. And then there are a few other menu items for that particular parameter. So for FO depth, we've got all these six parameters. For LFO sync, we've got these six parameters. For LFO rate, we've got these six parameters. So here's what they do. Value shows you the value of that parameter. And if you hit mute, you'll see what it's set to before you touch the pad to edit it, which you can. Some parameters don't have numerical values. For example, sync, its value can be either sync on with, I guess, triplets, dotted, on, or off. So four values in this case. So value is one of six things you can determine for that parameter, in this case, sync. You can also assign that to, currently it's assigned to X, but you can assign it to Y, up and down direction on the pad, to the depth slider, or turn it off, disconnect a parameter from control. There are a few reasons why you might wanna do that. For example, say if you wanna to touch the pad and not change a delay effect parameter. So you heard those jumps before as I changed the timing of the delays, or even in the phased loop up effect, you might wanna change the, the feedback. So you might want the loop to fade out or not, but you may not want, you might not want to change the time when you move on the X axis. So you would then go to the time parameter and disconnect it. You would unassign it from anything. So assign is the second thing you can do regarding a parameter. Then you can set minimum and maximum values for when you drag across one of the controls and you can set a curve, how you want that parameter to change. And you can also determine the polarity of that curve. These are the curves that you can choose from. Moving on beside the individual effects parameters, Effects also have common parameters, which you access by holding edit and pressing this twice, you get common. I'm not gonna go over all of these, but for example, you can set a release time for when you lift your finger from the pad. The rest are described pretty nicely in the manual. Then you've got the program edit option. You can save programs, rename them, clear programs, or edit the routing, we talked about this. And then for global settings, you turn the machine off and turn it back on with edit pressed, and you've got a bunch of global settings like gain for the input and MIDI settings, sync settings, and so on. You can press FX4 to save the changes and exit or FX1 to exit without changing. Moving on, Korg also has an editor and librarian for the NTS3. This lets you load up user effects. You've got up to 50 slots for user effects, which is not bad. Then you can also manage programs here. Have a look at everything that's on board. And these also stay in sync. And you can double click a program to have a look at its routing and exactly how each of the four effects in the four effects slots is configured. So if you create large multi effects programs, this is a great way to see what's going on. You can also see why there was quite a bit of menu diving. Each of the effects, right? So this is the high pass filter effects. Each of the effects has up to eight parameters, and each of these parameters let you control a whole bunch of things as we went through the menus previously. So a great bird's eye view into the routing. You can swap effects, of course, if you want, manage the curve, the polarity, and choose whether a parameter is assigned to a control. This lets you rename programs if you want. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons for the NTS3. On the pros side, at least I think it sounds great. And the fact that you can line up four effects in series or parallel or any other combo opens it up for a lot of creative chains. Most of all, while it's hard to estimate the final retail price, if it's gonna be around the NTS1 pricing, the NTS3 offers a pretty compelling value. Of course, the ability to load up third-party plugins opens the platform up for creative effects, but you should be aware that while there are plenty of effects that are compatible with the previous version of the NTS1, 
one mini log xd and prolog you can't load up those effects directly onto the nts3 the developer needs to recompile those and adapt them to this platform once they do that they have access to up to eight parameters instead of just two on the original sdk and i asked artemi from sign vibes the processor in here is between five to eight times more powerful than the processor in the original nts1 xd and prologue this means that better sounding reverbs can be developed stereo grains can be used instead of mono grains in the case of albedo by sign vibes more chorus laters and features closer to desktop effects as opposed to what could have been fit on the original line of log devices so, so far mostly pros. On the cons side, the build doesn't inspire confidence, the tops and sides are relatively thin PCBs, and this doesn't feel as sturdy, say, compared to a Volca or another fully plastic strong production device. I would worry about throwing it in a bag unprotected, say, compared to a regular effects pedal. Also, since the screen sometimes conveniently fits only six characters, you will find yourself diving up and down menus quite a lot if you want to get into the weeds of controlling and customizing how an effect works. Also, you only have three control dimensions at a time, X, Y, and effects depth, for potentially up to four effects with many, many parameters. You can overcome that somewhat with the freeze functions and the hold function, but unlike some other multi-effects where you have a bigger screen and can see more parameters at a time, here things need to be done one parameter at a time. Then on the firmware side, one small but major change I'd like to see is that when you go ahead and edit an effect parameter, you wouldn't see the assign menu first and then have to go to value. That's five steps to edit a parameter and then click back up when you want to choose a different parameter. I'd just like to see the parameter and then edit its value directly. Also, as far as I understood, the current SDK doesn't allow you to process incoming MIDI data, meaning that this can't be used to create synths that are playable via MIDI. It's a shame in light of the power in here, hopefully they can add that to the SDK. So that's it for the NTS3. I'll link to my phased loop plugin below, which I also tested on the NTS Mark 1 and the Minilog XD. You'll also find below a link to my ever expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks. Hit like if this was useful, ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.